Hello students, in this video we'll find the genus equations on a torus. Let's recall that our torus is defined in the following way, r of u and v is going to be b plus a cosine of v cosine of u, b plus a cosine of v sine of u, and then just an a sine of v, okay? And what we're doing here is we're actually just taking a length b, there's a fixed length b, and then we're drawing a circle of radius a, like that. And so in other words, this length over here is a, so is that length over there. And we're just drawing an angle over here, right? And so that, that a corresponds to a length of v, right? So that's going to be a cosine, that's my v angle over there. And that's giving me points around the perimeter of this circle over here. And then as I'm going to take this line over here and then I'm going to rotate that whole circle, that point that corresponds to this b plus a cosine v, b plus a sine v, I'm going to rotate around the axis, right? And so therefore, what we're going to have, and then of course that z is all, my z height is always what? My z height is always going to be this a sine v over here. That's always my z height. And then the other two components, the x and the y components, are rotated. Okay? That's going to be my v. So the numbers of the u, the u angles correspond to these angles over here on the torus, if we go sort of around like that. Okay, great. Okay, and so of course that's my u, u axis, u. Great. That gives an, so imagine putting a circle there, picking it up, rotating it around, and you get a torus. Great. All right, so what's r u and r v? So r u is going to be what? Is going to be b plus a cosine v negative sine u, and then b plus a cosine v cosine u. And there's no u over here, so that's just a zero. What's my rv going to be? My rv is going to be what? It's going to be just a negative a sine v cosine u, a a sine v sine u, and then finally an a cosine v. Now, it's actually really easy to check that these vectors are perpendicular to one another, right? So these two vectors over here are perpendicular, which means that there's no cross terms in my metric tensor. So what's our metric tensor going to be? Our ds squared is going to be du squared, and so that's going to give me this squared plus this squared, so I'm going to have a um, b plus a cosine v squared, du squared. And then over here, we're going to have a what? Well, an a cosine squared v. This will give me an a sine squared v sine squared u and a sine squared v cosine squared v, so it's going to give me a total of just a squared. So I have an a squared and then dv squared. Great. Now I have my metric tensor. I can find the Christoffel symbols. So let's do so the Christoffel symbols next. So that's our metric tensor. Great. So what's my gamma? Uh, let's do u, u, u. Let's think what that's going to be. It's going to be a u derivative of the log of the square root of this thing, so that's going to be nothing over there. It's going to be nothing. Because what I'm using is the fact that this is really d by du of the log of b plus a cosine of v, which is nothing. If I do the gamma u u v, I'll do the v derivative of this thing. So if I do gamma u u v, then instead of the u derivative, I'll do the v derivative. And so what's the v derivative of this thing? It's negative a sine v over b plus a cosine of v. And then finally, what's the gamma of uvv? That's going to be negative 1 over 2 gamma uu, b plus a cosine v squared. Then I do a what? Then I do a u derivative of the v component, which of course is going to give me nothing. Great. Let's do the other Christoffel symbols next. Notice that these formulas are very simple because I'm using orthogonal curvilinear coordinates, right? So check out the link to that video to make sure you understand how I'm doing these calculations so fast, okay? What's gamma of what? Gamma of v, v, v? Well, that's going to be the v derivative of the log of the v component, which is nothing, okay? What's the gamma of v, v, u? That's the u derivative of the log of the square root of the v component, which again is nothing. Good. And then finally, what's the gamma... And the fact that most of these Christoffel symbols vanish is what's allowing me to actually be able to have any chance of solving these GDS equations, right, explicitly. All right, then u, u, u is negative 1 over 2. Negative 1 over 2. Then we're going to have the what? Then we're going to have the v, v component. 
the mu component is going to be a squared. Then we're going to have the um, the u the v derivative of the u component over here. Uh, the v derivative of the u component, and so it's going to be a two b plus a cosine v, and then negative a sine v like that. So one of the twos, one of these cancels out, and so this becomes what this becomes uh, sine of v times this. The two cancels out, one of the a cancels out, the negative sign cancels out, so I have an a in the denominator, and then a b plus a cosine v all divided by a. Great. Now we can write down the geodesic equations. So are my geodesic equations. Well, let's do the u one first over here. So we have u dot dot. And what u Christoffel symbol survives? Just this one's going to get two of those things over there. So negative 2 ab sine v over b plus a cosine v, like that. And there's no b over here, actually. There's just an a, right? So there's just no b. It's just going to be an a. Let's rewrite this a little bit cleaner. So it's twice this thing over here. So it's going to be negative 2 a sine v over b plus a cosine v like that. And that's a u dot and then a v dot is equal to 0. Okay? Good. What's the second equation? GS equation? It's going to be v double dot. And the only thing that survives over here is the u u term. So it's going to be this thing over here squared. So it's going to be the sine of v then b plus a cosine v all divided by a and then u double dot u dot quantity squared is equal to zero okay now we're going to work in the non-trivial cases of course i have a trivial case when u dot is equal to zero this first whole term vanishes this term vanishes so, so if u dot is equal to zero then v double dot is zero then we have linear solutions in u and v right so that of course corresponds to the meridian when you're basically slicing the donut one way or slicing the donut the other way right so if you have the two slices the traditional slice of the donut you slice along the plane where the donut is transverse to, and you slice along the rotation of the donut, you get two of those, you get two parallels and meridians, and those it will correspond to geodesics in certain cases. But let's work on the non-trivial cases of these things. If the v dot is not equal to zero, this tells me that u double dot over u, then minus two a sine v over b plus a cosine v, v dot, is equal to zero. And both of these terms are logarithmic derivatives, right? This is the logarithmic derivative of u prime. This is the logarithmic derivative of b plus a cosine v to the power of negative two, which tells me over here that u dot has to be a what? If two logarith if I add two logarithmic derivatives together and get zero, those functions to be multiples of each other, right? They're proportional to each other. So this is going to be a c1 over b plus a cosine v quantity squared. Okay, because I have the sum of the logarithmic derivatives, right? Good. Because, of course, what's the derivative of this thing over here? It's exactly this, right? So, of course, the, the reciprocals are the same, so they have to be up, up to a constant proportionality the same. Good. All right, so now what will we do? So now, um, that works out great. And so now what's the second equation going to give me? The second equation over here is going to give me what? Um, I have a negative sign, so that's a 2. That's good. So I can take the reciprocal. Perfect. And so now, with this equation over here, I'm going to hit with the v prime. So now I'll have v pro double dot v prime is equal to what? Plus the sine of v over a. And then I have one copy of this in the, in the numerator over here, and I'll have four copies of this over here in the denominator, right? So that's going to be a what? It's going to be a c1 squared over what? Over b plus a cosine of v quantity cubed, right? Because I'll have a u dot squared, which is this thing to the fourth power, and I'll have one in the numerator, which will cancel out, right? Perfect. It is equal to zero. And so now, of course, the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So what this allows me to conclude is this allows me to conclude by integrating this that one half v squared, and then that has to be equal to, I throw this on the other side, is equal to the um, minus a constant, a1, over this thing, a cosine of v quantity squared. That's, of course, v dot, right? 
cosine of the quantity squared plus another constant, a2. So now I have an equation for v dot, right? And so of course to isolate v dot, I'll take the square root of this thing. So of course that integral is going to be very, very messy to do. But nonetheless, I've reduced the, I've reduced the order of the differential equations up to these constants by a order of one. Now for different choices of a1 and a2, we'll get different geodesic equations. So in other words, aside from the meridians and the parallels, there's this other family of geodesics around the around the torus that has to be solved numerically by solving these differential equations of for the system of differential equations of first order numerically. Of course, they are partially decoupled in U, which makes it a lot easier to solve those things with other sort of clever tricks, which you'll see in further videos. Thank you very much.